Uh, last weekend I was visiting Blue Lagoon. I made this brief video to show you the height of the lava dikes around Blue Lagoon. The machinery is constantly working there, raising the walls in daytime. It was less um, work done in the evening, but they are working really day and night there to make the walls high and high. And you see how high is the lava from the past eruptions. It's uh, almost reaching the wall height, and it was very close to overspill uh, during the last uh, eruption. So will this dike hold the next lava flow if it will come here? We don't know, of course, where it will take place exactly, but there is a chance that lava might flow the same way again. And it's really Fortress Blue Lagoon now, surrounded by huge, enormous walls. It will be the monument of history in the future. And now Blue Lagoon sits in the top, you know, it's like a, a bathroom top with, surrounded by big walls around and if uh, lava spills over, this top will be filled and Blue Lagoon and geothermal power plant will be destroyed at once. We will see what will happen. We pray that this will not happen and the people who work in Blue Lagoon will have their work and People who live in Kaplovic and Arctic will have their hot water and heat in, uh, in winter time. This is my sincere hope. Now we will go over the latest update from the Icelandic Met Office. The land uplift in the Svartsang area, means around Blue Lagoon, continues at a similar rate to previous weeks. By the end of January or beginning of February, the likelihood of an eruption starts to increase as model calculations indicate that approximately 12 million cubic meters of magma will have accumulated beneath Schwarzenegger by that time. The models are based on estimated magma inflow rates, but minor changes in inflow could impact the estimated timing of the next eruption. Seismic activity around Schwarzenegger remains low similar to recent weeks. Uh, the Icelandic Met Office hazard assessment has been updated also with no changes made. It remains valid, bearing any changes until January 28. So we do expect eruption in, in at Sunukagir crater or sometime early February perhaps in the middle of February, it's very hard to say. The volcanic eruptions are rather unpredictable when it comes to the precise time. And we do have uh, earthquakes preceding the eruption, but in case of places where we have seen eruptions earlier, uh, the notice is very short. As you know, the last time when the eruption took place, the notice was only 20 minutes. But it was, of course, a different case back in 2021 in Fagrada when we had the earthquakes going on for half a year at least and there were many more earthquakes as magma was breaking up in a new location but here it's erupting like a geyser so here is a different story and the uh, eruption notice is very short but sometime in February let's put it so the likelihood of a new magma intrusion and potentially an eruption is expected to increase when the volume of magma beneath Schwarzenegger matches the amount that left the magma region during the magma intrusion and eruption on November 20s. Geodetic model results estimate this volume to be between 12 and 15 million cubic meters. According to the latest deformation data, the magma inflow rate is currently estimated at just over 3 cubic meters per second, similar to the rate observed before the last eruption. If magma accumulation continues at the current rate, the magma volume beneath Swartsenki is projected to reach 12 million cubic meters by late January, and approximately 13.5 million cubic meters by the first week of February. Therefore, the likelihood of magma intrusion and potentially an eruption along Sunnukur crater may increase as late of January. 
Recently, we also saw a lot of steam has risen from the new craters at Sunukar Giver Crater during the past few days when we had a lot of snow here in Iceland. The steam is considered unusually high, but it must be probably because of weather conditions. Uh, for example, cold, snow and humidity play the biggest role in generating so much steam. However, it can be ruled out that the heat from below has increased somewhat with increased magma accumulation. Uh, the area is very cracked after the earthquakes uh, in the past 18 months, so there, a cat, there could be a clear pass for a, god, for a hot gas to the surface. It is still uh, predicted that the probability of magma intrusion and the eruption will increase closer to the end of the months. There has been little or no seismic activity in the area of the eruption in recent weeks. Um, uh, yesterday, however, there were several small earthquakes in the middle of the series of the crater. Those are the major updates from Iceland for now. Of course, we expected the eruption of Barthar Bunga volcano, one of the most dangerous volcanoes in Iceland, in the middle of Iceland, close to Vatnajökull Glacier, where we had uh, a lot of uh, earthquakes. However, this ended in nothing. It created unnecessary agitation. Also, many tourists cancelled probably their tours to Iceland trip. This uh, proves again how little we know about the volcanic eruptions and how powerless uh, we are against the forces uh, of nature, such powerful forces as a volcano or magma flows. There are things in this life which will always uh, remain beyond our power or capabilities. But as you know, 5000 years ago, Barzar Bunga volcanic system created the biggest lava flow in the Holocene post-glacial times, lava flooded 950 uh, square kilometers and reached the ocean at Stokshire. I will go one day to show you that lava. This lava has a lot of crystals, big um, junks of crystals on it. And if you visit uh, the lighthouse in Stokshire, you can uh, explore it better. Uh, so um, that lava flow was the biggest uh, in Holocene. Lava traveled along the river flows for over 100 kilometers from the site of eruption at Pardarbunga volcanic system. And the towns of Salfos and Stokshari are built on that lava. But not all the eruptions of Pardarbunga were that big, some were the smaller ones. So here you see the walls of Blue Lagoon, the dikes. And in comparison to the tiny buses which are down on the parking lot. I wish you all the best, uh, be well, and have a blessed day. God bless you abundantly.